Hello, everybody. It's Janice of Shavalot, and I'm a little late. I apologize. It's 7.07. .07. I was supposed to be on at 7 o'clock, um, but I just have a lot to do. And I just ran upstairs and put the air conditioning on. So if you hear a buzzing noise, that's the air because it was very, it's just so warm in here and um, I didn't want to be too warm. So today we are um, painting our uh, canvases that we made yesterday with the new IOD molds. Um, so here's one of them we made yesterday. We put some spackling for some more texture in the background to represent the sky, the ocean, see little swirlies in the ocean and the sand. And that was on a, a piece of block, wood, something. And this one we did on, on just a regular canvas. So I don't know what size it is. I don't know, 11 by 12? Not, I don't know. I didn't look, guys. And I'm bad at remembering things. So um, I was fortunate last night because Tara of Once Upon a Tide Treasures, I hope I remember that correctly, um, asked me what I was gonna, how I was gonna paint them. So last night we got to think about it a little bit and I came up with two ways that we're gonna paint them. Um, one way we're gonna do is my last 30 day live that I did in June, um, we made this, this is a lampshade um, that was on a lamp and it was red. It was red when I painted it. It's old vintage antique uh, uh, lamp. So we, used the mermaid IOD mold and we painted it. I don't know if you can see, well, here. I have to look too, that's why. I don't know if you can see. If you can see that there's some gold on there. Uh, some, I think that that was the panties from heaven. And so obviously mermaid tail. So one of these is going to get that look, and the other one is just going to get a off whitish, pale, bluish look. I had to wet my hair because it was just so pretty. So I vote that this one, the smaller one, get this treatment because it's it will be too much on the big one. So I'm gonna put the big one aside, and we'll start with the with the um. Liquid patina, not liquid patina. I wish I had done my research today. I was at my booth all day today, so I was bad. I didn't, wasn't able to uh, do my research. So I have an easel to put this on, and I'm going to lower the cam camera so you can see it. So bye. Stay with me. We're going to paint. We're going to paint the um, seashells to make it look like uh, the mermaid. That's as low as it's gonna go. <laughs> oh good, can you see it? Let's see, let's see. Um, how about, um, I have like two feet of space here, you guys. How's that? There's another, um, there's another room in my house, which I may invade soon. I just have to get it. I have to get it. Yeah, that might be good. I should go a little bit lower. Okay, because I don't like looking at myself. So I'm going to hide behind there. <laughs> All right, so the first thing we're going to do is whoop, whoop, mermaid tail. It's not mermaid, it's mermaid tail. I 
And that's the first thing, first color we're going to apply. So this is a great color. Let me know who's here. Maggie Fletcher, good evening. Hey, girl. So this is Mermaid Tail. And we're going to squeeze it. Why am I yelling? I don't know. I'm going to squeeze it with my trifle bottles. A little dried up paint on that. So. Woo! Woo! Beautiful mermaid's tail. I'm going to get my brush. What brush am I going to use? How big is this thing? I'm going to use. Um, I'm just going to use this one. It's not a DIY brush. This is a Worcester brush that I get at Home Depot. It's got a rubber handle. It's a, it's a decent brush for like $5.99. So I, I use this one quite often. So now let's take, let me take a moment and take a look at this thing and see how it's. So it's still a little pink. I know that yesterday I said that it was going to dry white. Um, it definitely feels dry. The reason why I think it's still a little pinkish, you guys can see okay, right? Is because I left it in the basement last night and it's very moist in here. So, um, moist, humid in here. So that's why I think it's still a little pink, but all right, guys, I don't know about you. Hi, Pete. How you doing? Peter, my brother is here. He's a fantastic artist. We made this Peter yesterday out of some molds. My OD molds that are the a new um, release of molds. Now I don't know about you, but is your first time you put get the paint on the brush and you're gonna apply it? Does it make you nervous? Because I'm oh, and a seashell fell off, so I gotta glue that back on. So I get nervous, but uh, all right. So I want to think for a moment. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start from the bottom and do kind of like a maybe a blend to get a little lighter at the top. So maybe we'll, the shells, because they're gonna have so much treatment on them. Not the right brush. Let's try this one. This is just a cheap, chip, chippy brush. So th these shells are gonna get so much treatment with the, uh, the patina effect that we're gonna apply that, um, We'll start, we'll have the darker look at the bottom, and then we'll go up to a little bit of a lighter sky. So uh, the, the ocean will be a little bit lighter, and then the sky will be even more lighter, or more light, I should say. So I am going to paint all of the seashell molds this mermaid tail color. Tara's here. Hi, Tara. Thank you so much for being here. This is Mermaid Tail. Do you have Mermaid Tail, Tara? Because it's a necessity. Mermaid's Tail is a necessity. It's a color that I would say, people sometimes ask, what color do I definitely have to have? And um, Mermaid Tail is definitely one of them that I would pick anyway, um, that you have to have. Now this isn't realistic, obviously, <laughs> because I don't think that seashells get the patina effect that I'm doing, or seahorses, but I think it's gonna be interesting in the end. And you may be asking, why am I not spraying this with my water bottle? And I will tell you, it's because I dropped it behind that table back there. So I have to go get it because with it being so yucky down here, this paint is getting, it gets thick pretty quick. The clay is absorbing. 
or I don't know what it's doing, but the clay is, is getting a little thick. So you see I'm putting this, this, these molds have been drying for 24 hours. And um, I believe they're pretty good. They're not 100%. And I, again, I think it's because of the humidity in this uh, basement. So another lesson, I need to bring these upstairs to dry in the house where it's not so humid. So and my glasses on. And I can't, they're all fogged up. Yes, and have mermaid tail in old 57. I need other greens and blues. Good night. Don't get nervous because we can just paint over. You're right, Peter. Peter, are you going to sleep? Peter is in South Korea, I think, right now on work. So I don't know what time it is there, but I appreciate him turning in for a moment to say hi. And if we don't like this, he's right. We can just paint over it another color. So I do want to give this a try. It's like I always say, you got to try it first. You just got to try it. And then um, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And we can paint over it. I'm going to try to go a little faster. I don't want to, I want to be a little gentle. Okay, I do have some uh, sandy blonde that I might intermingle in, in this, uh, the backdrop of these so that it looks like sand. I don't think I want the sand to have the patina. So can you see? I wish I could make this thing go up. Uh, what if I, huh, is this higher? Well, that's an accident waiting to happen, right? I did get my new um, tripod today, um, but, and it's beautiful, I love it, but I did not get the, um, I didn't get the attachment for the foam. So I have my tripod, but I have no attachment for the phone. <laughs> All right, I'm going to get a small brush, maybe a little bigger than that. Um, try to paint inside. Let's get some cake batter and uh, paint, let's just try to, I'm gonna dab it, I'm gonna do the, um, the uh, more texture, just dabbing in the cake batter. I'm using my left hand, I'm not a lefty. So how's everybody doing today? Lisa Roth, Maggie Vincentson, yay. So Vincentson, what do you think about the mermaid's tail on these seashells? We're going to do the uh, patina effect with the pennies from heaven and I actually don't remember exactly how to do it. So I gotta remind myself. So I'm just putting in a little bit of this for the sand. It is mixing a little bit with the mermaid's tail, but that's all right. We can take care of that later. Okay. I need a smaller, smaller brush to get in between
I'm going to wait for that mermaid tail to dry a little bit more. Right now, it looks like a hot mess because it's the first, the first layer. I'm just trying to get the basis down for what we're doing here. It will come, it'll all come together as we keep building layers. And I really need to get my sprayer, so I'm going to have to take a moment to get my sprayer. I kind of like that cake batter with the mermaid's tail. It looks kind of cool, actually. So let's continue with that. Take a little bit of a a little bit of a tie dye effect. But it won't stay because I'll be putting and so I'm gonna so the sand is going right underneath this spackling here. I can feel the ridge of the spackling. It looks like a little bit of the water is seeping into the to the sand. And what this also is doing is it's outlining the seashells really well. So it makes the seashell stand out a lot more. So I'm going to try to go move a little quicker. Let me, I hope you guys can see okay. So I have to order the, attachment for my new tripod because I didn't order it with a, uh, it doesn't have the, it didn't come with the attachment for the phone. Just came with the attachment for the um, camera. So I need to, all right, I'm just going to stop this for now and work on the water. Okay. So the water, we did the spackling and we put a little bit of a wavy effect on it. So I'm going to not use mermaid tail for the water. I'm going to use, let's see, I have sea glass. And then the sky can be, let's see, I have, that's oh, too dark. I want the sky to be, have some whiteness. So maybe what we'll do is we will, we'll ombre, uh, maybe we'll ombre some, some sea glass. So I need to take one moment to go get my, my spray bottle. It will be right behind me somewhere. I got to see if I can. If I can grab it. Okay. Um. I got it. Yay. Okay. All right. So the, sea, the uh, mermaid tail is going to dry a lot lighter. So we'll let that dry a bit while we work on the uh, while we work on the water. I'm sorry, you guys. Okay. All right. Here we go. I need a new brush. No, I don't. I'm going to squirt this. I'm going to squirt this. 
I'm going to get this brush. Get this. I'm not using my good brushes tonight because um, this is a, such a small space. It's a little bit more intricate. So let's uh, let's put some sea glass in the water. My sea glass is dried up. It looks terrible right now, doesn't it? It looks like a it looks like a little kid's painting. But it's going to get better, you'll see. And if the colors are too uh bright or too prominent, I could always put a whitewash over it. The other piece I'm putting a whitewash over it. So, all right, so here is the ocean. I have really tiny little um, paint brushes that I'm going to have to use for the detail work inside of these molds. See, it's it's a little darker on the on the spackling. Looks like sea monsters, doesn't? Don't they? Don't they look like sea monsters right now? Okay, I'm just gonna let that be for now. Let that dry a little bit, and let's get some color. Whoa, let's get some color in the sky. The pink actually looks kind of nice. But I don't know if it'll stay like that. All right, so that's the sea glass. Now let's get, oh, there's my sea glass. No, that's mermaid's tail. Okay, and then what did we say? We were going to, I need some, a little bit of white. So I have my, um, my tarnished pearl it's like it has a little bit of a grayish hue to it and i'm going to i'm going to blend a little bit because of the clouds and the waves and all of that so uh let's uh oh it's dripping yay i'm getting some nice drippies What I want to do is, um, I want to paint this pink part. I want to paint it white because I want those to actually be the clouds. So I'm just going to blend a little bit of blue with this. This is mermaid's tail.
It looks like the sunset. All right, so that's a pretty good first coat, first basis. Base coat, I should say. I did like those drippies. See, the thing about using yucky cheek brushes is the bristles keep coming off. I don't like that. That doesn't happen with my DIY brushes. I do like the drippies, so I am going to squirt this again. Uh, see what we can get. What we can get now. Let that let that dry a little bit. I have my. See, that one's kind of pretty. Now the next thing we're going to do is. Now we're going to put another coat on these uh, seashells, and I believe. What we did, oh, I remember. I, oh, I got to, I have to. Actually, the same blue and white that I used up in the sky, I'm going to dry brush a little bit of that on. seashells. Dry brush means you just put very, very little on your brush and then you wipe it off. It's called offloading when you uh, wipe it off. So uh, dry brush means you're just brushing uh, using a dry brush, not wet with a lot of paint. It's a little bit better already with this uh, light, very, very light blue. I just mixed the, crin um, the tarnished pearl with a little bit of the mermaid's tail to give me a light, a light blue, a whitish blue, and I'm just dry brushing it on the seashells. So this, this, this painting is going to be a lot of layers. I'm not reading comments, guys. I'm sorry. If you have any questions, let me know. I will um, look at the comments in a second. When I'm done with this dry brushing, I will look at the comments and see if you have any questions. I am going to have to do a lot of fixing up, like going in between. I'm not happy with this. Uh, uh, the cake batter that I put for the for the sand. We're going to have to fix that up a little bit. And this is this will what this does do is it brings out the the detail in the shells. I love the little seahorse. He's not little. He's a good sized seahorse. All right. So the sand dollar. Okay. So we'll let that dry for a moment. I want to see if you have any comments. Please say hi. Uh, Maggie, I find if I keep a small container of water to dip my brush in, the paint flows much better. So, um, yeah, that's not a bad idea. Um, I'm, I'm just so used to using my continuous spray mist bottle. Um, 
it, and that way your colors don't get muddied in the in the water so it's always a clean uh squirt of water so i feel like um it, it keeps it from muddying a little bit my glasses are so foggy lisa roth i am loving that texture thank you you like the texture oops in the, the spackling, I don't know if you can see the texture with, in the spackling yet, um, but there's lots of texture with these with these molds, that's for sure. Uh, Vincentston, pennies from heaven. Guess what, Vintage Sin? You read my mind. Pennies from heaven, we got pennies from heaven. That's gonna go on, these seashells. And we have the shipwreck, shipwreck crew, whoop, whoop. If you're in the shipwreck crew, let me know. Um, this shipwreck finishing wax. Uh, vertigray, that's, I keep saying patina. It's a vertigree uh, patina. So, yes, in the spackling, whoop. I always do that. Oh, uh, I made a mistake. I should never hit a button. Go away. Okay. All right. Uh, I think I keep, oh, you are, everyone make sure they say hi so we know who you're here. Yes, please say hi. All right. So we're going to work on what next? I got to take a look at it for a second. Oh, I'm going to, I can bring you down again. I gotta take a look at it for a second and see what I need to do. Okay, I'm missing some. I'm missing some mermaid's tail on some of these pieces, so I'm going to fix where I've missed some mermaid's tail. This is going to need me to um, spend some time later off camera just uh, making sure that I didn't miss any spots. It's good to, to dab like this because it gets into all the little crevices. All right. I could have done a better job gluing as well. Um, I don't mind where some of the, like, oops, something just fell. These pieces are sticking up. Like, I, I could always go back and glue that, you know, glue that, those pieces before I put it in my shop, um, before it's ready for, for sale. Okay, so let's do, I don't want to bore you with the little detail work, but um, let's do a little bit more of the dry brushing. Oh, well, I should let that dry so it doesn't blend. I'm going to let that dry so it doesn't blend. Okay, now I'm going to get out and see how we're doing here. All right, so I need what color? I don't particularly like the way that these color, this is the same color, but because this is on the spackling, it's darker. So what I might do is I might bring the sand all the way up to the spackling. 
So I might do that. I'm not going to do that right now because I got to make sure that's really dry because it'll, it'll muddy if I put the yellow on here. So the Scott, sorry, I'm going to dry it a little bit. I have my, my heat gun. So just so that we can get done a little quicker. I'm going to dry some of this paint so that we can work on it. Not too close because the heat gun will burn the paint. I really like the pink in the sky. I don't know, can you see it? That pink is from the sapling. Um, but I could always add some pink to the sky. I have petticoat pink. And, oh, I actually also have French uh, millinery, which is a light, light, light orchid, orchid color. All right, so that's pretty good. A lot of texture on this. You are right. All right, now what I like to do is, this is what I am inclined to do right now. I like to work with what, especially on a piece of texture, I like to work with what I see, what naturally happens in the paint and in the texture. Now I'm seeing this darker blue, like kind of on the edges here. And I really like that. Um, so I think that what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a small brush and I'm gonna dip it in the mermaid's tail and I'm gonna create that so that it stays there. It's just a shadow actually. So um, I'm just going to dab a little bit of mermaid's tail. Actually, what it is really is just a little uh, dry brushing of a darker color. Just so long because it really accentuates, it, it just accentuates the horizon. not a good brush. I need a better brush. This is better. My mermaid's tail is starting to get a little dry. I got a really small brush here. And I'm just going to give it a little bit of, a little bit of highlights. Oh, that piece of back can come off. Not too much, but just a little. Okay. All right, maybe we should squirt that, make that drip a little. Let's see. It's not really dripping because there really is not a lot of paint. 
not a lot of paint there. While we let that dry, why don't we take our pennies from heaven. This is the uh, pennies from heaven copper patina. And we're going to do the same thing as we did with the white. We're going to dry brush a little bit. I need new brushes, guys. I'm going to go visit the turquoise eye. I actually, I think I'm going to become a retailer for Paint Pixie um, because their brushes are so good. He has a good brush. All right, so it's a very thin little kind of wide on the top brush and I'm going to just use my cap because you don't want to waste any of the paint I'm putting a very little on I'm going to offload a little just until I know how much is going to start coming off oh, ho, 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 oh boy that is beautiful So oh, it's a little, so dry brushing is, it's a little more than dry brushing. Uh, I'm just going to kind of outline or highlight some of the, the, the special lines in these molds. I don't want to totally cover. Can you see? Now I get to the wonderful, what is he called again? Seahorse. And then after this, we're going to do the vertigree wax, which is a, a greenish uh, colored wax, aqua color, not green, aqua. That's going to give these molds even more dimension. So what do you think? Do you like this so far? Are we getting... We getting somewhere? I mean, starting to come together a little bit. I still have lots to think about with the background. This is like a spiny shell. I, a spiny shell? take a look at what I'm doing this a little closer for you guys too and um, I'll hold that a little bit I love these starfish. The texture on the starfish is, is beautiful.
All right, so that's the first layer of the copper patina, pennies from heaven. And um, <clears throat> it looks really good. Let me bring it up, bring it a little closer to you. So now we have the pennies from heaven, copper patina on top of the mermaid's tail. So it was mermaid's tail first, and then I mixed mermaid's tail with tarnished pearl, which is a little bit of an off-white. And I did a dry brushing of the off-white over the mermaid's tail. And then I took the copper pennies from heaven and kind of dry brushed a little bit of that over the um, other two layers. Now the fourth layer is going to be the vertigree rocks, but we're going to wait for that to dry. While we're waiting for that to dry, I got to do something about this sand. The sand is really bad. If it's dry, it's still not dry. So I can't really, you know, just about the sky. All right. I kind of, I want to get some white clouds in that sky. So I have the white out already. It's the Tanish Pearl. And I'm going to, I'm just going to follow these lines of the, can you see? So this, you can see this darker area, that's the spackling. So I'm just, when I put the spackling on, like totally random, I thought they looked like clouds. So I'm going to stay with that and just paint the spackling with this tarnished pearl so it'll look like clouds. Doesn't have to be perfect. That's where some spackling fell off. So we'll just paint that. There. Okay, so that's going to dry. It's going to dry lighter. Um, and we can put more coats on later. The wayward cloud right here. And if we want it, we can, if we miss the pink, we can add some more. Uh, we can add some more pink. We can add some pink into the clouds. I don't think we're going to have time to do both canvases today, you guys. I'm sorry. I'm taking it's a little bit longer. Debbie Siegler. I have a question. Yay. Okay. Let me see. I have a question about the plastic. Plaster. What brand is it? Where do I get it? Hi, Debbie. I am with you, Debbie. I love all things mermaid and ocean. I can't wait to get this mold. Hey, guys, you know what about this mold I want to tell you? Well, first, let me answer your question about that is spackling that I used on this canvas. Um, that's not a canvas. This is wood. Let me, go, let me get it. Spackling. This is the spackling I used. This is called Dry Dex Spackling. It's just from Home Depot. When it's wet, it's pink. And then when it dries, it's white. 
Um, this didn't dry completely white, and I believe it's because of the humidity in this basement. So, but I only used that spackling because that's what I had in my house. I was very determined I needed to make some texture on something the other day, and that's what I had in my house, so that's what I used. There are other things that you can use um, instead of spackling. Like if you went to um, any art store like um, Michael's, if you can get other kinds of mediums to add to your canvases to get texture, like modeling paste, I think is one of them. Um, I, I can drop some links down below because I've heard, I've not used anything else, um, but I am gonna start, I do wanna get to Michael's and, and get some other kinds of texture things. So I use that spackling because it was in my house. So if it's in your house and you want some texture, feel free to use it. <laughs> Um, and in the meantime, you know, before you go out to a nut store and get like the real stuff you're supposed to use. So I hope that answered your questions. Can you buy smaller size paints? This size right here is called, is the sampler size. It's eight ounces. This is the smallest size that we have. It's $13. This goes a very, very long way. Um, I can paint, what they say on the DIY website is that you can paint a whole entire dresser with this one, one can, a small dresser, not a humongous one, but the regular size dresser you can paint with one of these. So I find that um, it lasts a long time. Plus I use lots of different colors on things. I very rarely paint something one color. So it's, you know, a whole bunch of colors. We take a little bit of paint from one color, put it on, a little bit of paint, another color, put it on. And then also this, the um, uh, continuous frame bottle, we add water to this clay-based paint so that the clay loosens up and it, and it does, it goes further. So hopefully that answered your question. Okay, great. Thanks. I got to put my glasses on. <laughs> oh, got it. Great. The texture is really nice. Give it great depth. Debbie, you're, I'm with you, girl. I love texture. That is why this clay-based paint is the best on the market for texture, because it has clay in it. It's, it has chalk and clay, but the clay is what really gives it its texture. That is the difference between clay-based paint and chalk-based paint. Plus, the clay absorbs the pigment, the pigmentation, the color, really, really well so that the, the pigmentation of the clay-based paints is, is unmatched as well because of the clay. Okay, your first one that has said clay-based paint, got it now. Okay, I'm sorry. Joy Grambo, whoop, whoop, in the house, shipwreck crew. Deborah, I'm sorry, was I saying chalk-based? This is clay base paint. Yes, I, I need to be very clear about that. Um, this is Debbie's Design Diary DIY clay base paint. If you're familiar with um, Debbie Beard of Debbie's Design Diary, Turquoise Iris, um, we all use this paint exclusively. It is fabulous paint. And it's on my website, shabalot.com. So Joy Grambo out. You can go ahead and buy modeling paste and spend big, spend big money. But the big box store spackling works. Oh, thank you. Okay. Well, that was great. <laughs> I'm really glad you, you said that, Joy, because I didn't know. I, I think I haven't been doing this that, that, that long. And the more I do it, the more I'm expanding and trying new things. And so um, Joy has more experience. And is saying that the other kinds of texturing, modeling, paste, and stuff um, doesn't seem to work much better than the spackling, and it's a lot more money. So let's go. Let's continue with this with the spackling. Tara, oh, I can't see. But if you are doing a big piece like a large dresser, you can use it on stencils. You would be better off 
with a regular spackle. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for your advice. <laughs> I'm really happy that I just found that spackling in the house and it seems to be working and you guys are approving. So I'm really happy. Yeah, we're going to do some raised stencils. That's a great idea, Tara. When are we going to do that? Um, next week sometime because I have a couple of announcements to make before I go. Again, I did not finish this. But I think you kind of get the idea. Oh, I should do the wax. Let me do the vertigree wax. Um, let me do that. Okay. So I'm going to. I told you that I did get my new tripod, but it didn't come with a phone attachment. So. I can't use it tonight. So that means tonight I'll be on Amazon trying to figure out what I'm supposed to buy. All right. So this is the shipwrecked finishing wax. I'm going to use my finger. Put a little on my finger. And I'm going to put it over. These seashells. So it gives it a, a really nice patina effect. And if I feel that it's covering up the copper, the pennies from heaven too much, I can always go back and put more on and keep doing these layers until they're perfect. But these are just, I'm just showing you quickly how to achieve this effect and then you can just use these you can just play with it until you get it to the way you love it this vertigree wax is a little bit uh, dimmer I don't know if that's the right word um, it's more of a muted more of a muted tone I would say like the mermaid's tail was so bright and this vertigree wax is more of a muted uh, tone it's supposed to mimic things that have been in the ocean for a long time they turn or been exposed to the elements for a long time copper usually I guess it's copper things statues and stuff like that. Can you see that? How that's toning everything down a little bit. And then I'm going to take a cloth and I'm going to wipe it, buff it. So, um, It'll also give me a nice sheen. He needs to be glued down a little bit more. So this guy needs some more work. Um, that's how he looks so far. So he's not not quite not quite done yet. I will work on him, finish him off, and then tomorrow this one is going to be completely different. It's going to be completely different. Um, it's going to be just two colors, the, the whole entire thing. So I appreciate you guys being here. Um, she's almost has shab. Your content is getting better and better. Joy! <laughs> Thank you, because I am growing, I think, learning more and more and more, and I have the support of so many people, and I have great products, and it's like anything else. It's, they say, what is art is a muscle? Art is a muscle, uh, I think they say. I'll have to look that up. But the more you use it, the better it gets, so the bigger it gets. So I'm, 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 this, these 30 days, uh, these lives that I do every night with you guys are so helpful. They really, really, really are a great thing. They want to let you know that today's Wednesday, 
Friday, I have a special guest who will be joining me at seven o'clock. It is Denise O'Hare of Up Chick Glitz and Glam Girl. So she is um, in Philadelphia, I believe, and her specialty is uh, coastal chic. So she paints all of her, um, not all of her, she does a lot of different things, but she's really, really good at the coastal chic look. So this is kind of like it, but it's going to be on furniture. So starting Friday, it will be a double, a dual live with me and Up Chick, it's really hard to say, Up Chick Glitz and Glam. And uh, she's going to be teaching me how to paint in her style. So it should be fun to watch. I hope you guys um, tune in. That's Friday night at 7. Hope to see you tomorrow. Thank you so much for being here tonight. And stay safe out there, you guys. Um, thanks for joining. Take care. Good night. And...